All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Football Podcast. Today here, me and Nick, we're doing our preview and prediction for the TCU Horned Frogs in 2022. New look coaching staff, Nick, Gary Patterson parts ways with the school on Halloween night after eight games. And it didn't seem like the best look for his tenure to end after 20 years, just like that in the middle of the season, especially when he quickly moved on to coach the Texas Longhorns. I want to get your thoughts on that. But first, Sonny Dykes replaces him. He was at TCU in 2017. Pretty uneventful tenure at California. He did put Derek Hoff in the NFL, went, moved on to SMU 30-18 and 18 in four years there. OC, A.J. Ricker and Garrett Riley, Lincoln Riley's younger brother, 38 points per game plus in the first two years at SMU, which was the last two years, that is. And then Joseph Galepsi, this is pretty interesting, the defensive coordinator. He was the Tulsa D.C. for three seasons. Oddly enough, Tulsa, the last two years, held the SMU offense quite in check. And that might be why he got this job under Sonny Dyke. And what are your thoughts on everything I just said? <laughs> thought it was very interesting how Gary Patterson's time ended. I thought it was a bit really disrespectful for a guy that, you know, took this team to the Rose Bowl for crying out loud with TCU and just rebuilt this program and, and made them a power player in college football, got them to the Big 12 and just absolutely changed the program top to bottom. And they just toss him out like that midway through the season. Don't even let him finish out the season. I think it was just disrespectful. And now he ends up at UT, which I think is a good spot for him as a special assistant to the head coach. I do think Sonny Dykes is a good hire. SMU has been a fun program to watch, one of the more fun group of five programs over the last few seasons. I love watching them, especially on like Thursday, Wednesday nights. I think they have some serious talent, and it highlights that. Definitely a new era in town. Interesting to see how it's going to go here in Fort Worth. What are your thoughts on Joseph Gillespie, though? Because I've never seen that before where a team gets dominated by a guy and then he decides to hire him on because he was that impressed with him. You know, I think that's, a very, that's, that's major respect from Sonny Dykes, one of the top offensive minds in the game to hire a guy that had his number for two years. Right, I guess he didn't want to have to potentially face against him if should Gillespie get a, a new role in the Big 12. I think it's an interesting move. They obviously, Gillespie knows something about Sonny Dyke's offense, and hopefully he can clue him in and kind of guide him so that they avoid mistakes like that against other teams, potentially. Yeah, one of the most interesting things I've seen this offseason for sure. Well, again, this offense, it was not a bad unit last year. It averaged 6.7 yards per play, which was among the top in the conference. Only scored 28.7 points per game, though. They were also ninth in FBS on third down. The problem was their 86th in red zone touchdown conversion rate. They just could not find the end zone when they got there. It seems like that was a problem the last couple of years, really, with TCU. Max Duggan, though, like, he's a gamer. I love watching him play, but he's yet really to develop here at TCU. I think he will here with this new set of coaches. He's a dual threat guy, fifth, fourth year starter, rather. I like Max Duggan. You know, I love what he does as, as a runner. I think he is a savvy passer. Overall, very sound football player and quarterback. You know, how do you, how do you feel about Max Duggan? I think Duggan's a solid QB, you know, 2,000 yards in the air last year, 16 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, solid numbers from 63.9% completion percentage. I think he's a solid quarterback. I like what he can do in the pocket. I like how he can also run as well, 352 yards on the ground. Solid quarterback, good guy to lead this team who's not really expected to shatter any earth-shattering expectations. A solid, stable quarterback, good leadership. I like him to continue in this role. I think he'll only get better as time progresses. I think under Sonny Dykes, he has potential to pick up some of those numbers. Looking at this backfield, they lose Zach Evans, Lowell Miss, of course, but they return pretty deep unit, I'd see. Keandre Miller, 83 carries, 623 yards. That's seven and a half yards per carry, seven scores as well. Imari DiMarcato, he's the backup, 446 yards, four touchdowns last year. Now, it's pretty good numbers for, you know, these two players that were playing behind Evans for the most part. They also had a Corey Wren from Florida State, Amani Bailey from ULL. So this is a pretty deep backfield. I'm very happy with what they have this year. And you throw Duggan in, of course. I think these guys are really going to strive for that 200 yard per game mark on the ground, which they almost eclipsed last year. I think they'll definitely do it this season. I think Miller's a solid back. Also can be involved in the passing game a little bit. Average 9.8 yards per catch last year and a touchdown on some limited receptions. Six, 623 yards on the ground, 7.5 yards per carry, and seven touchdowns for Miller. Super solid back, the perfect guy to lead this offense, considering how Duggan can run as well. Good one-two compliment there. I like the backfield a lot. I think it's a solid backfield and one a nice depth through one through three. I think these guys can all have impacts early on. Same goes for wide receiver. This might be the top trio in the conference, really. You know, they return the top three well, behind Texas, I'd say. But, you know, they return Johnson, led the Frogs in yards and touchdowns in only nine games last year. 634 yards, six scores on 33 receptions, 64210. This guy really high points the ball. He can get downfield in a hurry as well, like Quentin Johnson. Darius Davis, he's undersized at 5'9, 160, with plenty of quickness and speed. Used him as a runner, a kick returner. You know, he had a team high 36 receptions, also had 500 plus yards. Tay Barber also had 30 plus grabs for 500 yards. He's also a 5'9 guy, similar time in terms of size. So I like this trio of pass catchers. Um, how will they perform this year? I think they'll do pretty good with Max Duggan. 
progressing under Sonny Dykes. I'm very excited for this passing you know, passing game this fall. I like this passing game a lot. I think Davis is a really solid slot wide receiver, 14.4 yards per catch last year, a touchdown, 518 total yards. I like to see him slot in there. I think he's a solid fit there. Barber as well, I like what he can do, solid guy as well. Bit of a versatile player, two touchdowns for him. Then Johnson, you know, six touchdowns, 19.2 yards per catch. I love this trio. I think it's a solid trio, one of the big ones in the Big 12. I think all three of them can expect to have impact in the offense early on in the season. Don't sleep on Blair Conright either. 5'11", 179 from Lubick. He had 18 yards per catch last season. So I got plenty of undersized guys that can get downfield in a hurry. Very interested to see how Dykes incorporates all these guys. And looking at the offensive line, it was pretty quality unit last year, I thought. You get three starters back. And we also added second team all AAC center in Allen. Ali from SMU, he falls Dykes over. They got some nice size on the interior. Ali, 300 plus pounds. Steve Avila at right guard, 6'4", 334. Brandon Coleman at left guard, 6'6", 325. Some really prominent sizes there, Nick. And they also got Andrew Coker on, uh, at right tackle, 6'7", 319. Very excited for this offense, and I'm very excited to see how they run the ball. Not just because of the skill in the backfield, but these guys are big. I love the size offensive line. Coker's a very strong right tackle of his size, and Ali comes over from SMU. Solid transfer, really great experience. You highlight his accolades for the ponies. He comes over and follows his head, former head coach. I love this offensive line top to bottom. I think it's very strong. I love the experience as well. All the guys are at least a junior in classification with the red shirts. I think this is a solid offensive line, one of the better ones in the Big 12, and I think that they have decent depth as well behind it should something happen to the injuries. And I think that they can create a lot of holes for their offensive running back to pick up some ground. The biggest reason this team disappointed last year, I picked them to hit the over total. I think they were at like seven or eight and a half wins, and they came nowhere close to it. It's because of this defense. It's just 35 points per game allowed. They were 119th nationally in total defense, 122nd against the run, 127th in rush touchdowns allowed. These are just terrible numbers. Big commitment by this staff, though, to fix the side of the ball. Added nine transfers. I want to start with the secondary, though, Nick, because obviously the front seven really had their problems, but this back end was pretty confusing because they're very talented and I think they can make some big steps. Drew Bias, Hodges, Tomlinson, 5'9", 177, but he's very aggressive, had 13 pass breakups in 2020. Wasn't that great this past season, but still showcased his playmaking abilities. Seven pass breakups, two picks, two forced fumbles. This is a guy who is a veteran. He's played a lot of football, very aggressive. He's going to be one of the better ones in the conference, Noah Daniels. He's only played nine games over the past two seasons, but he's also been a quality corner when on the field. And I love the addition of Mark Perry, a prize transfer from Colorado. Three picks, 66 tackles a season ago. I think this is a pretty quality secondary here. Should improve. We'll get to the front seven in a minute, but I think this is a unit they can rely on this fall. I like the secondary. I think Mark Perry has a lot to prove after his time in Colorado. A really good pickup here for TCU. I think he slots in perfectly. Hodges Tomlinson, you know, solid guy. I like the numbers he puts up, 41 tackles last year, in addition to the tackles for loss and all the other pass breakups and interceptions across the board. I think it's a solid secondary. I like what they can do. They have some solid experience. I like a guy like Bud Clark as well. Didn't play a whole lot last year, but made 10 tackles in his limited experience. I like to see him step up and play some decent amount of football this year. Across the board, it's a solid secondary. Despite the praise for that secondary, the front seven is really the focal point here. The linebacking group was a young core that didn't get much playmaking done last year. D. Winters was a breakout star as expected. 74 stops, two picks, a sideline, a sideline tackle, good athleticism. He can also cover, um, you know, Brady Russell week one against Colorado. I think that's going to be a fun matchup. Despite his skills, though, the run defense struggled. He needs some more help. Jamoe Hoge, 60 tackles in his first season. He might be a player that can step up. Johnny Hodges transfers from Navy. So at least, you know, they're getting a guy who's disciplined. Terrence Cook from Florida State. Cooks, rather. A linebacker should make some big strides this year. I'm not very hopeful on it, but I do think the potential is there. I love the talent D. Winters has. He's a very solid linebacker. Five tackles for loss, six, one sack, two interceptions last last year as well. I expect him to lead the team in tackles as well again this year. They did make some good moves. I like the way they picked up some guys out of the portal. I think there's some solid players on this linebacking core. But I think the front seven is just a bit weaker than what you would hope for, for TCU this year. Look, 15 sacks last year. O'Shawn Mathis, Kahari Coleman, they were really good early in their career. They both opted to transfer to better Power 5 schools after underwhelming 2021 season. Not just for them, but for the whole defense, like I said. You know, Dylan Horton, though, he was solid. 6'4", 250, 52 tackles, 9 tackles for loss, and 4 sacks. Both those numbers led the team. The second highest returning sack getter, though, was safety Milk Bradford. You know, production up front is absent. You know, he's back with some seniors, though. Terrell Cooper, Sonny Missy. 6'2", 312. He didn't play last year, but they're expecting to get things out of him. They added a handful of uh, you know, new players, though. Doug Blue, Eli, Caleb Fox, Demonic Williams. He's a true freshman. Oddly enough, all four defensive tackles I just named are 6'2", exactly. They're all also 300-plus pounds, though. So, so much added size up front. Will it be enough to fix the run defense? 
I just think that they're lacking sort of the talent here. I like the size, but the run defense, it was very poor last year. Teams ran all over them. I think it's going to be a similar situation this year. You know, I just think that they don't have what they really need there. They returned some solid solid guys. I think Horton's a really talented player. Returning him, obviously, nine tackles, loss, and four sacks is, is a solid number to see out of Dylan Horton. But across the board, I just worry about the defensive line. I just don't think it's quite up to par in the Big 12. You know, the schedule preview and prediction. I, I understand why some are calling us a sleeper team in the conference because the Big 12 isn't exactly tough this year and the offense will take some major steps forward. Defense, on the other hand, I'm also excited for it. How much improvement will happen is the real question mark. You know, they take over you know, the Colorado game. It's on the first Friday night of the year. It should be an offensive thriller. I, I'm very excited for that game. Take the over on points on, in, in that contest. They oddly enough play SMU. Of course, Sonny Dykes, he comes from SMU. They play them on the road. I think they're going to outlast Texas Tech in a shootout as well. Both for this team, just because the offense will be strong, maybe even eight wins if the te- you know the defense can find a nice tune here. I'm really putting my faith in the Sonny Dykes and Garrett Riley to boost this offense and find the end zone a lot more. That's why I'm at six wins. How are you feeling? Because I mean, even though I have them at that mark, you know these aren't impressive teams they're beating really. Right. I think that Sonny Dykes is the right hire for the future, and traveling to SMU is certainly interesting. Week three. But this team, just I think their defense is going to really let them down this year. And I think the I think the offense will take a step forward because Dykes is an offensive-minded coach who can kind of guide an offense and build it the way he wants to. But the defense leaves a lot to be desired. A lot of question marks there. I can see them dropping the game at West Virginia as well to fall to five and seven. I I just don't see the sleeper thing with this team. I think they just don't have enough talent on the defensive side of the ball to really make that sort of impact. This is just a, an average Big 12 team for me. Yeah, I mean, if they commit a handful of turnovers at Colorado, they're probably going to lose that game because neither team really has a defense and you don't want to play playing catch-up with the defense you have right now. So they could certainly stumble to three or four wins maybe. I don't think they will. I think six and six or five and seven is a really good mark for them. But I think yeah, this team is really a mystery for this season. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, Nick, as always, I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.